Does the Christian life work like one of those reward programs that you can sign up for at a store by like downloading their app and like Starbucks, you know, make enough purchases and then you'll get a discount or, or a free drink or something like that. You know, does the Christian life work the same way? Like if I do enough good stuff in this life, do I get some sort of a perk or a benefit because of it? Like, oh, I'm going through a difficult time. Um, if I go into my app for the Christian life, I can be spared from this troubling situation or I can receive some sort of special treatment today. I suppose that would be nice, but that's sadly not the way that the Christian life works. Peter says in 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5 that Christians should expect something quite different in this life. He says that Christians should expect fiery trials, suffering, and insults. He says that we should expect a life of humility where anxieties abound and your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I mean, that sounds like an awful rewards program. If, you, if you've got the app on your phone, you should probably delete it right now. There's no way I would sign up for a program like that. And yet here we are, you and I, living the Christian life. And we know something is true, that living the Christian life is not always easy. We go through all the same struggles and difficulties that anyone in this world might go through. But on top of that, Peter says that as a Christian, we should suffer to it. We should expect to suffer because we're a Christian, even when we haven't done anything wrong. And so I wonder how many of you have already gone through suffering like this. Perhaps, perhaps you have. Perhaps your friends at school tease you because you are a Christian. Perhaps your peers insult you or even hate you because of it. Perhaps you feel as if you're missing out on some sort of teenage fun or a rite of passage because of your relationship with Christ. Maybe you are kind of resentful of that relationship. Maybe you really wish you weren't part of this reward program. I mean, what's the point of being a Christian if we don't get some sort of a perk or a benefit because of all of our loyalty, right? What reward could we collect that could possibly make the suffering that we are going through now all worth it? Well, one thing is for certain, the Christian life is not an easy one to live. There will be suffering and there will be difficulty. But Peter also reminds us in 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5 that we are blessed in this life despite the hardships and the struggles that we face. And Peter says the first blessing is that the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. So through holy baptism, God blessed you with the Holy Spirit, and he connected you to Christ and his salvation. And the second blessing that Peter talks about is the blessing of the church. Through the church, God continually nourishes your faith by word and sacrament. And the third blessing that Peter talks about, and then this is really the most important blessing, is the future glory. Because at the proper time, God will exalt you, meaning your reward is coming. And Peter says, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So your reward is coming but you're not the one who's put all the points on the app. That's Jesus. He's done it. Jesus is the one who is who is ultimately, we're going to cash out on, on, on his hard work, on his loyalty to us. See, Peter doesn't deny that the sinful, that the Christian life will be full of hardships and difficulties. But notice that he does say that after a little while, after after all this time of suffering has come to an end, it will come to an end. It's only temporary, but the glory of God is forever. So thanks be to God for this promise, and thanks be to God for providing us with this salvation through Christ Jesus, our Lord.